safari yangu Though your wings may now rest, 
your spirit will control will continue to solve, guiding us as, as we navigate both the skies and the challenges of life. Rest in peace, Captain John Nogi Kahehia. Your legacy will forever be part of Saint for GTA services. You will be missed and never be forgotten. Thank you. Now, I will do very fast. I have to mention, uh, this one I have to mention, because this one, especially this, 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 this particular guy, I have to start, I got a few calls from uh, some of these uh, UN heads, and the first one I got about two days ago was from a gentleman called Steve Muzigo. Steve Muzigo is uh, head of UN peacekeeping uh, aviation uh, in Central Africa Republic, a mission called uh, MINUSCA. And uh, he had a very good words to say about him. They know one another for a very long time. You know what happened? At one stage when he left the military, uh, he had to close the border and he went to Uganda to get uh, his command for the Grand Caravan. So, and uh, Muzigo is the one who checked him out. Uh, don't ask why he did not do it in Kenya, such a good pilot. You know, sometimes we, sometimes we are very difficult with Kikidogo. I believe that is the reason why it happened like that. So when you have that from Uganda, it's very easy to convert. So, so Muzigo, Muzigo sent uh, his condolences and uh, from the office, the whole office uh, mission in Central Africa Republic, Bangui. Now, the other message came from uh, Goma, Munusko, also UN peacekeeping. That is the, the last place that uh, uh, Captain Kahehia actually flew outside Nairobi. That's a, that's, that was the last base. And uh, Jeremiah learned about it, and he, he, he also, he's the head of, of the mission, and he also sent uh, his condolences and the, teams, uh, and the team's one. Then, from Juba, we have uh, uh, Unha's uh, chief of aviation transport. He's a gentleman, actually, a member of this church. It's called Jeffrey Mwangi. Jeffrey Mwangi leads one of the largest uh, World Food Program uh, mission with very many aircrafts. He wanted to be here. He couldn't because, unfortunately, his uh, assistant was on leave, deputy. And uh, a lot of things are evolving in uh, southern Sudan, so he could not be able to, to join. So he, they, he also sent uh, his message, and he said the military he arrives here, he wants me to escort him all the way to Kesselian, which I will do. Now, the other one came from a lady called Sandra Leg. Sandra Leg is, is the one in charge of a uh, World Food Program, uh, both Kenya and uh, Somalia. Even in Kenya, we, <laughs> we, 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 we have humanitarian. You know, UN flies into Kakuma and Adab. And uh, lately, of course, you know what is happening in a lot of uh, these places, Galiza and Montana, so there's quite a number of flying. So she also sends uh, her condolences, and she will also be joining us on Friday with a, with a, with a big team. The last one came from uh, UNSOS, that's the uh, UN peacekeeping nation based in Mogadishu. The gentleman called Fernand also knows uh, the captain for donkey, donkey, donkey years. And uh, him and the whole team, they sent condolences. Thank you very much. And I'm very, very sorry for you. Thank you. Thank you, Moses, and uh, those condolences have been received. We now move to our friends in the KDF, and they have to be very careful because of the protocols. I'm told that uh, there will be two speakers. One is one on behalf of the intake, uh, KDF intake, i.e. those who join together, and that to be Kano Wangombe, and Kano Wangombe will make a decision as to who will talk on the rest of the armed forces, and that will have to be the highest ranking officer with us this afternoon. So Kano Wangombe.
Our presiding priest, Father Martin, our family, our Kaiga, our Christ, our Pedro, praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, my name is Colonel Joseph Jerome Guilla. Uh, I'm here to represent the Indic 14. Yesterday, to report our family up in Gringos. Now, we are going to be but they are promised on Friday they will join us together to see our brother. The rest in peace. Um, yeah, we joined the forces in 1981, August, as intake 14, together with the rest of the cadet, as cadet officers. Uh, we commissioned in 1982. Uh, in Major was a coup. It went with quite a number of us. Um, Kaiga was in the Air Force, um, but to the Andrea Pamoja, but Kaiga left quite early in 1996, I think, and uh, joined the civilian world. That's why you can see the other colleagues, pilots here. So during our work, we are all retired now. So we formed a group, all retired officers of Intake 14. We meet regularly in August. For the last three years, we have been meeting together. And John was an active member of the group. Um, in August, he was quite in perfect health. But he, in October, we received a message from him, from the Lord Hospital, that he's not well, to pray for him. Uh, the other thing we received is information from India. So, as intake, members of the intake, we are together with the family, wish you well, and we are, will support, continue supporting you as a, an intake. Um, what I can say briefly is, my brother John, he has fought a good fight, he has friends there is, and he has kept the feet. Fair be well, John. God bless you, the family. Thank you. Thank you very much, the Master of Ceremony. Uh, God is good? And all the time? Wow, thank you very much. My name is uh, Brigadier Retired Paul Njema. Uh, I will be speaking on behalf of the Kenya Defense Forces and also partly mention about this gentleman. He's a good friend because I live not very far away from where um, John is going to be arrested. First, let me recognize our mother, uh, recognize the dear family, both wives and children, and of course the clergy for allowing us this, for giving us this opportunity to stand before this uh, congregation and express our sadness due to this loss, a great loss. As you have heard from his intake, and they are my seniors in, when you talk of uh, intake, because they joined the military four years before me. I joined in the military in 1986, and therefore they were already, uh, uh, they had already learned their hopes, and they were able to give, uh, uh, you know, were able to guide us. But, uh, God is gracious that uh, I have been uh, uh, given that rank. Of course, worked through the ranks, through that of the Brigadier, before I retired last year, July. And I thank God also, because uh, after retirement, I was seconded by the Kenya Defense Forces 
to an organization called the East African Standby Force, where I am the director. Therefore, it's a privilege to address you. Um, John, for those who knew him, and it has been said, I did not continue um, you know, talking much because you have heard from his colleagues, from that post that he trained with me. He was such a gentleman. He was such an officer who did not spare any effort to ensure that those that he was given responsibility to train really got the skills right and he insisted on professionalism which is inculcated in us those that have served and continue to serve in the military. Therefore, Shosho, Awan, Nataka Kusema Kwako, Ulitupatia Shuja, Captain Kahedia, Liza Kijana Ambaye ni Shuja, Namekua Shuja, Nambaka Ku, Lala Kwake, Amelala Kua, Shuja, Ambaye Tamilika, Sio Kwa, Jeshi Pekiaki, Nakin to Meskia, Hata Kuleko, Mwen, Kawaida, Amekua Shuja. Kwa wajane, nataka kusema ya pole sana kwenu, nataka kusema kwa watoto, uh, John Kahiria, pole sana. We cannot pretend to feel pain than you do. We know you do, you feel that great pain, but um, as we have been encouraged, uh, you have to take it in stride. Because this is a journey all of us are going to go through. I want to mention in jest, that, as it has been mentioned by, uh, by Captain Mwangi, you are not wrong, he said he was calling us and every other, he did not matter uh, your standing in the, in, the, in the society, but once you interacted with him, he will always say no goes. Yeah, that has been mentioned. And uh, as the saying goes, Siku ya nani ikifika ya kufa kila miti na kwa nini? Teleze. So no matter what effort was put to save his life, every effort in that forest of efforts seems to have been very simple. He was not sick because we, uh, we regularly met. Because whenever I, um, I'm not on duty, I will always visit. Uh, his, that joint, the famous joint called uh, uh, Gringos. Therefore, whenever he was, uh, he was around, he would shout. He would call me, Brigadier, where are you? Can we have uh, a chat? And uh, we would do a recap of what has happened within the two months or whatever time he was away. And we would share uh, the good things. Uh, and I would say this for certain, John was a very uh, great man, a visionary person, a very strategic person, looking at what he has put in place within that span of his life. It goes a long way for all of us to imitate. Because look at the greens, look at whatever any other investment that he's made. They were all strategic. And they still are strategic. And therefore, I would want to thank uh, Father for the encouraging words that uh, the family needs to sit together and bring the resources that John has really worked hard to build so that you can together share in his memory to ensure that this is put to fruition Whatever vision he had in mind, and I'm sure he has shared this uh, with you, that it is put to fruition so that those that are coming after him can benefit. It is in the Bible that those that are wise invest to their fourth generation. And I know John has done so. If everything that he has put together can be coalesced, and made to function 
for the better of the siblings, for the better of everybody that is in that family. I want to share to say that uh, before he, of course, he retired. He said that he has worked. He worked for a very short time, but to the military it was not short because he trained great minds. He, great, he's, he trained the great professionals that have grown to be generals in the Air Force. Uh, and I can tell you, they all treasure the time they spent with John Bukai. Therefore, I want to say to the family, Paul Esana, we cannot give you uh, Paul Zaidi Yaile to Mesema, because it's only God who knows the purpose. He had great plans. When we were sitting together, he had great plans. And you can see it in what he was trying to do. Every time he came back from those difficult uh, flights that have been described, he was very, uh, uh, you know, busy planning for his future. He was planning for his retirement, because he had said so, that um, he was retired next year, after 65. I think that is the mandatory age. So he was very, he was seized to this. He knew that time is coming, and he should prepare for his, uh, 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 you know, future. And he had started putting foundation, ready to come home and retire. Only for God to take him, and uh, we thank God for his time. Therefore, for those almost 65 years that he's been with us, we thank God for that. I want to say that uh, may the Almighty God grant the family the fortitude to bear this loss. And to my good friend, and as he called himself, himself Prince Bonobo, Rest in peace. Thank you. I will now move on to the general aviation sector, and the three companies that wish to make their tributes. The first one is Jumbo Jet. Is there a representative of Jumbo Jet? Yes, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, and uh, praise God. Uh, my name is uh, Derek Kariki. I'm uh, Captain Kahe, he was my godfather. And uh, since uh, we were children, he was a great inspiration uh, to become a pilot, together with his other grandson, uh, Kibe Hoge, who couldn't be with us today. I was lucky enough to become a pilot, and uh, my greatest joy and privilege was that uh, I got to fly the Captain Kahia, and uh, he was to do my check ride, and he's the one who made me captain at uh, Jumbo Jet. And for that one, I'm always grateful, and I come myself very lucky, and he shall be missed. I shall be reading the following on behalf of uh, Jumbo Jet. Uh, the Jumbo Jet fraternity and pilot community are saddened by this, the loss of one of our own. Death has unfortunately taken away a genuinely warm individual, skilled pilots, and more importantly, a loving husband and father, depriving many others, including all us, including us all, of a good friend. While we mourn the loss of Captain Kahehe, we pay tribute to and celebrate a life that he was well lived. A life committed on excellence and a strong passion for people. Not many leave behind a legacy of such dedication and accomplishment and have a chance to fly in two realms, especially within the the military and uh, civil aviation space. A big achievement for a pilot. Captain Kahia was uh, among the first pilots to be enjoyed, employed by Jambodet in September 2016 and rose very quickly in the ranks to become an instructor and check pilot of the fleet. Although his association with Jambodet was uh, two years, he etched uh, his mark and achievement as being the first pilot to deliver an aircraft for Jambodet from Abu Dhabi to Kenya and uh, part of the standards team at uh, Jumbo Jets. 
For the few who had the pleasure of meeting uh, Captain Kahia along the jump jet corridors, he left a lasting impression on, uh, on the minds of his acquaintances. As you've heard, his humor was good <laughs> and bad, but it was lasting. Colleagues uh, knew him as an affable, cooperative, helpful, and dedicated pilot. Despite his established background and position, Captain Kahia, as you may have heard, was called Kahich, was a modest man, a real gentleman, and for those who managed to sit and share time or a meal uh, in Sat Nyama with him, his determination to carry, uh, to carry on uh, despite uh, trying circumstances uh, demonstrated his uh, commitment to duties and responsibilities. In his own quiet and calm manner, he showed how to work through challenging times and uh, to carry everyone along. Life can be fleeting, but a life uh, lived to the fullest stays in fond memories. Captain Kahia, through his own decorum and grace, endeared himself to many. This is a particularly difficult time and a painful time for his family. And extending to them our heartfelt uh, condolences, we wish them uh, courage and strength uh, to bear his irreparable loss. The Jumbo Jet uh, Pilot Team. Thank you. Father, I may disclose that that is my son. <laughs> Sorry, um, you know, in the military, we say there is always uh, something called as you are. And uh, as you are means uh, that uh, we go back some, uh, some few steps. Um, I've just been notified that among us is one of, uh, maybe probably he will tell us, we have a general with us, and I wish to invite um, a general, uh, Major General Kinodia to come and say a word and greet you because he comes from the wings uh, and therefore he will, be, he will be representing us all and also the Air Force. Please. The parish priest, uh, the family of uh, John Gui Kahia, friends, uh, good afternoon. God is good and all the time. I am Major General Eric Kinudia. I am from the Air Force and uh, right now serving uh, as the Commandant, the Joint Commandant Staff College. For those who remember, it was called Defense Staff College, DG. It was called Defense Staff College then. Uh, I stand here on behalf of the KDF family uh, who Kahehia worked with for a very long time. If he left in 1996, he was with the Kenya Force for 15 years. So it's a long time. And as it was mentioned, a lot of people passed through his hands because he was a uh, uh, pilot, he was instructor pilot, the QFI. So I bring sincere, deepest condolences to the family. The loss is imaginary and imaginable. Please accept the KDS family. Sincere and deepest condolences at this difficult time. At this difficult time. Okeni Ramrami Kutoka, familia KDF. One or two things, let me just mention about Kahe here. We used to call him Kahe. That was his uh, name by many people. I first met him uh, when I joined the flying training school at uh, ECD. He was my instructor. He taught me how to fly. I even see Captain Reed is here with us. They were together. 
they were our instructors at flying training school. So what we remember about Kah is that he was a very he had a very grand entrance and he used to come to class. A very grand entrance. And I think I asked him one time after he retired and opened that uh, joint at the uh, at the in Gringos. I asked him, how come you came up with this name? He told me another story, but my story, or our story is, he used to call us gringos. The gringo, the, the Spanish name for, for a bandit, or, 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 a, or an American, is a gringo. He used to call us gringos all the time. You know, so as much as he calls the other, the other name you're talking about, but he used to call us gringos. And uh, he, didn't have, he, he never used to have a name for us individually. Hey, gringo, kuja. So I, I guess maybe that name for gringos came from probably his uh, usage of that word when he was in uh, when he was in uh, when he was in uh, the Air Force. So we remember him very fondly. Uh, we remember him for many things that he did for us. Uh, he shaped us, molded us. Uh, those who encountered him, and of course, uh, there are many things that uh, we can talk about. Uh, uh, but we remember him well. We know that he's gone too soon uh, for, for what we uh, wanted to be him a bit longer, but God is, God's plan is always different from what we think. We want to say once again, Pauline Nisana, the family of uh, uh, Kahia, Pauline Nisana, Mama Poa Pauline Nisana, we pray for God's grace, Pray for God's consolation, pray for God's strength, we pray for God's peace, and we pray God will wipe away your tears and ease the pain of the loss. Mungu Abarik, Asante. Thank you, General. We now move on, still within the aviation sector. Uh, the next speaker will be a representative from ALS. I think the operations manager had indicated to be available. Thank you. The father, family members to Kahi here, and uh, all the friends who are around. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Okay. Uh, I'm from LS. I go to work I, uh, through a different company, uh, Moses Mangi is 748. But I'm here to deliver a speech for LS. Sorry, sorry. I wasn't that uh, clear. So I go to, to work with Kai um, through different companies, one of them being uh, 748. But I'm here to deliver a speech for ALS. Kea has worked, like you said, through the aviation industry, through many companies, and uh, everywhere he go, he left improved each and every person. Personally, as I talk, Kea was a father figure to me, and um, he, he taught me a lot of things, even now. I'm also in Kajado, same side with Kea, courtesy of him telling me, young man, you're making money, and this money you're making, you need to invest this money. And how to invest is through property, not the bank. I follow that footstep and uh, manage to improve my life a little bit. We feel there is a big gap Kahia has left in this industry first. And um, I don't know how we're going to feel it, but we'll figure out. But what I know, it will never be filled at any time. So having said that, I may just say about something about gringos. And uh, if you knew Kaya, I may be young, but I knew Kaya very deeply. Kaya used to like uh, cartoons, and uh, he would watch them, and he would watch for a very long time. So if I say that, you may have a clue where gringos also came from. Maybe there'll be interlink of words. Uh, so um, I'll take a few minutes of your time. I know we are here for a purpose and a reason, and. Uh, I'll end there, 
saying LS family starting with the chairman of the Kamil Aslam Khan, CEO uh, Shakil Khan and the entire piloting group. They could not manage to be here because uh, they had prior commitments. They are not in the country. That's why they're not here. But they are trying to make it by maybe to today or tomorrow back into the country so that they can be able to attend Friday send off for Kaeya. What we say is uh, Kaeya has offered this industry a very uh, he was innovative, and uh, he, people may say he was um, strict, but he wasn't, he wasn't strict. He used to follow procedures, because when, when you have laid down procedures in a company, aviation is not a company that will work depending on how you wake up and do everything. You follow specific procedures. And uh, I'm sure pilots will tell you, who are sitting this side, anybody who follows procedures, by the book and also adds more is not like in the industry because they tend to feel you are making them read too much because they need to be prepared. Kaia was one of those people. So having said that, uh, I think I'll end there. And uh, to the family, starting with the mother to Kaia, uh, we say sorry. And uh, the rest of the family also, sorry for the loss. And uh, we are together in this. And anywhere you feel like you need support, please walk to any of us within this building or outside of this building, and we'll be able to provide, as long as it's within our scope, we'll be able to, to, to be a shoulder to lean on or a helping hand as we push through this. Santi Sana. And uh, Captain Wawero Buku will close this sector representing Trident. To the parish, to Mom, Joan, Esther, my fellow KDF officers, retired or serving, uh, good, afternoon. good afternoon. God is good all the time, and all the time he is good. Now, uh, a lot of people have spoken ab about the very sober part of Kahehia, but I'm here to give you the other side. <laughs> the interesting side, the real side that made Kahehia human. I first met Kahehia in 1983 or 84, somewhere there, with uh, those of you who know Madeka, late uh, Major Masharia, uh, Colonel Oduor, they had come back from flying in Perth and we were cadets. While they were in Perth, they had, um, through, well, savings, this and that, had managed to buy cars. They were supposed to be commissioned, but because they left the military, I think halfway through the course, walikuwa hawaja nyooka kabisa, if you understand what I mean, so the military decided to bring them back to uh, cadet Kunyorosha, their way of walking and acting. You know, they went to England, it was a civilian institution, they would not greet people properly, a fan they may have been a strange word to them, they wouldn't salute, some of them walked like camels, or you know, their legs were not coordinated, so there they were. <laughs> but in all this, they had a car. I think it was General Badi and Kahehia, came with an alpha suit. Huh? I think it was, yes. And they told us about a place in Nairobi, and you forgive me, Father, <laughs> called F1. <laughs> now, you can imagine, we were young guys, I was not even 20 yet, and wondering how to get to this F1. We had never been to a disco. We had never seen rotating lights. They had described smoke that comes out of the ground. And we were, really, people dance and enjoy this kind of thing? And they said, yeah, 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 we'll take you. We'll take you. And we asked, uh, so how will we do this? We're in the camp, we're in a military camp. We're training, we're cadets, but they had a car. 
So we get to the gate and Kahehia says, you know what? You jump into the boot. And because we are officers, they won't check the car. So we jumped into the boot. Uh, a few of us in my course, uh, one was uh, unbelievably so, son to the late President Moy, Philip. We struggled and folded ourselves and bent this way and that way until we fitted into the small boot of an Alpha Sud. As soon as we cleared the gate, we came out. And we drove all the way from Nakuru to Nairobi to F1. And we saw the lights. <laughs> and we saw the smoke that seemed to come from the sky. And uh, most of us, you can imagine, at that time I'd never been to a disco. With, uh, we, uh, for those of us who had ever played LPs, you know, they used to fall one LP after another, so there was a break. But here it was, the music was not ending. And in my opinion, I thought that LP must be very, very wide. Because there's no change. There's, it didn't pause between one song and the other. It took me maybe another two years before I learned that there was a guy who was called a DJ mixing. <laughs> anyway, we got back to camp. Again, we jumped into the boot of the same car. As we got to the gate, snuck into camp, and life continued. Kahehia left, uh, went to Moya base. Uh, I went to Laikipia. I was a bit of a cheeky guy, was thrown out of Laikipia. And Gafla bin Vu, I come to Moya base and join the military, uh, the uh, Buffalo Squadron. And who is my instructor? Kahehia. <laughs> now, very many people, especially Mr. Moses Mwangi, who was our boss, has confirmed that Kahehia was strict. Now, back in the day, we, as we didn't know about simulators, you know. If you had to switch off an engine, the engine either really died on the real aircraft or, you know, you survived. There was nothing like simulators where the young pilots now go to Europe or, or South Africa or KQ where you practice an engine failure and it simulates this and this. No. You took off with Kahehia, you're flying along and he'd shut down the engine. And, and uh, 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 what do you mean? He's <laughs> shut down the engine. You are now on one engine. And he tells you casually, uh, the aircraft can fly on one engine. But if you think that you're going to crash and I die, na wewe ubaki, leo ndi utajua hayendi hivyo. So, why do I bring up the story of Kahehia having done that? Is when we left uh, the military, having been harassed by Kahehia um, and boxed, you know, <clears throat> Kahehi had quite a, strong, uh, quite a strong left arm. If you made a mistake, uh, the prompting, Afande, you know, the prompting that was done by Kahehi or Madeka there wasn't the nice soft one at all. Oh, you have made a mistake, may we repeat. He would uh, adjust his belts, turn towards you, and a bit of hammering, uh, uh, PK, you remember, and a bit of hammering and your gyros would reset. You'd now remember where you went wrong or went right. And he didn't waste time. But why I bring up the story is how many times it saved us when we went to work for the company known as Trident Aviation. Yes, we went to Loki. Loki was serving Southern Sudan. For those of you who remember, there was war until I think 2006. For those of us who were there in the 90s, late 90s, early 2000s, we were the ones who were doing all the humanitarian aid from one end to the other. Now, because of the work involved, most of the aircrafts, uh, Mwangi, as much as he wants to claim he was uh, doing a very good job, we were flying 100 hours in 10 days, and sometimes the engines failed. Now, 
you have two engines taking you from Lokichogyo to Malwalkon. It's a place west of, uh, Sud of uh, um, Sudan. One fails, you have a full load and you now have to fly back. Because for you to be able to land where it was required, you needed both engines so that you could apply the reverse to be able to stop on the unpaved runways with holes, goats, cows, and the naked Sudanese who are all running all around that place. Now you had to fly back on one engine. Many pilots, and we have a group called Lucky Boys, by the time they got back, they are their undergarments were a bit wet <laughs> due, due that experience. But all in all, it was Kahehia's dedication, his strength, and him calling you a no good this or that, that got us through to where we are until this stage. Now, coming to the word no go, that he called no go, no go res, and no go lets where those who are supposed to be. Kahe here one time called me a no go and I was a bit offended. Now I had become a captain and you know I asked him, you know, who, why? Why would you call me a no go? Why? Do I look like I have a tail? No. And do I look like, uh, you know, I had just come from driving on the Nakuru Road. And if you take the Maimahi Road, you see those nogos the way they sit on their butt and it has no hair. And I thought, no, surely. This guy can't be telling me that I am a nogo. Explain to me why you think I'm a nogo. So he explained. He took his time. And maybe, Mr. Mwangi, that is why Kahehia jumped from one company to the other. He explained how they catch monkeys. Apparently, if you put, if you allow a nogo to see you carrying a maize cob, and you go and put it in a hole, the nogo will come after some time, because nogos imitate other people, they imitate four-legged people, it will come and hold the maize cob while in the hole. If it now sees you coming, the nogo forgets to let go so that it can remove its hand and run away, it forgets to let go of the maize cob that it is holding inside there. And so people end up just coming up and catching the nogo. When Kahehia told me that, I understood very many things. Very many of us lose opportunities because of holding on to something that is not helping us. Yet, if we let go of it, we would have either gotten away from danger or something, or gotten a better opportunity. So when Mr. Mwangi complains that Kahehia jumped from here to there to wherever, he managed to remember the story of the Nogo. <laughs> yeah? We all must, in whatever circumstances and however we live, we cannot keep on holding on to something that is not beneficial to us. You see, the, monk, the Nogo is not eating the, the maize, but it won't let go because it thinks, you know, you understand what I'm saying. To the family, mom, Joan, Esther, the kids, on behalf of the guys we worked with in Trident and a group we have called Loki Boys, where it's a forum we have for all of us who are in Loki, I say Poleni Sana. I personally have lost a friend, a great instructor, and we pray that he finds, his soul finds eternal peace in the afterlife. Thank you very much. Thank you, Karura, for that. Um, it reminds me about the two vehicles that were bought by General Badi and uh, Kahehi. They were not able to insure them. So, <laughs> the, the journey from Nakuru, the insurance cover was a jungle jacket at the back, packed and then were in full uniform all the way from Nakuru to Nairobi. No policeman would dare stop them. Uh, Father, we are making good progress. Uh, I've only known two more speakers. And uh, this one will be to represent all friends generally. 
and that will be a speaker from Gringos Stroke Koroga Fraternity. And the, the representative is Mr. Nimrod Baweru. Hello everybody, Hello. my name is Nimrod Waweru. As you heard, I am from Tesserian to represent the many residents from Tesserian. We call ourselves Koroga Group and Gringos Group. If you are within the crowd, you can either stand or wave so that people may know that we are cohesive wherever we are in Tesserian. Thank you very much. We are here gathered today to honor and remember remarkably John Grogi. I'll avoid to use the name Captain because in Kisarian we know him as the Chief Nogo. <laughs> he has a life beside his professional. We all know that he has been to the KDF in the Fraternity of Aviation, a great aviator. But back in Tessarian, we know him as a friend. I met him when I moved to Tessarian. And previously, I lived in Nairobi South B. So as usual, as a gentleman, I said I'll be looking for somewhere so that before I reach home, I can comfortably have some tea or coffee. I didn't know anyone in this area, so I walked to Gringos because it is on a strategic place and you can't miss it. When I walked there, I asked the waiters, who is the owner, who is the manager? I was told, he's right there. So I walked to him and said, Jumbo. He said, Mzuri sana logo. And that is how I was welcomed in Kisera. Uh, he is an affection man, just as one of the captains had described him. If you do not know him well, you get offended. But if you get closer to him, you realize he is a gentleman with affection. He has a human side in him. And he is a great source of inspiration. Most of us have settled in Kisarian. We call Kisarian our home. And he, he has been very instrumental in bringing us together. It does not matter from which tribe. By the way, in our group, Gringos and Koroga, no one will ask you what tribe you come from or where you come from. We call each other Nogos. And that's how we live in Kisarian. As an aviator, Captain Kahia is associated with many areas, both in Nairobi and Kisarian, where his family ran a popular place called Gringos. If you happen to come to Kisarian, you don't need to ask any direction to Gringos. It's right strategically at the crossroad between Isinia and Rong, Magadi, and Nairobi. We know Kahia as a very good friend. He is a very devoted, devoted father to his family. Of course, most of you live in Nairobi or wherever you have come from, but we all now reside in Kisarian. With the family, we as a community in Kisarian, we would like to extend our, our friendship to them and assure them that we are not going to leave them alone. We are in this together and we continue living as a family. Kahehia has a civil side which many people do not know. Every Sunday, Kahehia never misses his mass either at Kisarian Catholic Church or Goroi Catholic Church. He will go to the church and then he will find you in the afternoon. And as you have all heard, Kahehia has 
a peculiar way of making you meet, even if mumeko sana at the same time. Now this Sunday, mukuje mbuzi. So by you coming to his buzi, even if you had quarreled with your neighbor, or you had a disagreement with the other one, you will find yourself seated with Kaheya, and you ask him, hey, no, you can say my name. So we are a cohesive group. We live together, and always feel free wherever you have time. Brigo's Inn has become synonymous with Kisarian. It's very difficult to imagine Kisarian without Gringos. Anytime you come to Kisarian, please pop in Gringos. You always find the family there. You'll find us there. And please feel welcome. To both group, Gringos and Koroga, let us support this family which Captain has left behind so that we are able to maintain the place as he has been doing it. With that, I would say my sincere sorry to the family, and may God bless his soul in peace. Thank you very much. I also have a story because I knew Kahe here for many, many years, Father. Um, and I will also be representing those from Sarai boys who may be here. And I think I saw a few at the back. John Dungu somewhere. Very good. And I met Kahe here in 1974 uh, when we joined Form 1 in Sarai. And um, after that, we've been friends for many, those many years. Um, after school, we kept in touch. He went to the Polytechnic. I went for uh, higher education. And um, once he was out of the Polytechnic, uh, we, were, we were still in contact. And we started our families together, almost at the same time. In fact, our wedding was in the same church on the same day at the same time. And we had also agreed that we will not have any guests. Uh, but this being Nairobi, <laughs> there were very many guests that came unannounced. Uh, and, and we don't know who leaked the information. So all this time he keeps blaming me. Because he says as a soldier he can't release any secret. It must be the civilian. <laughs> now he's gone before we clear that particular issue. Uh, I would like to just pick a few of the characters that I believe we can learn from Kahia's life. And one, one is been mentioned across by the many speakers. The issue of hard work being rewarding. He totally believed in that. And right from uh, his humble background, he came from Deya. And I'm not talking about Deya of... Uh, I'm sorry, Governor. It's not day of this day. It's day of those days. It was a very hard, hard area in terms of uh, development, environmentally. It was very challenging. I had relatives there, so I knew the place. Uh, so we met in Starehe, and I knew he came from a very humble background. And he worked very hard. He did, I think, uh, uh, he was in technical, which we cons they considered it to be a harder program than the secondary, and he excelled. In fact, he's among the first division ones then from technical side. Uh, so hard work, even in his career, you have all had. He's a very serious professional, and also a mentor of very many, including my son. Uh, when it came to my son's uh, training, he's the one who chose the college, and obviously he didn't choose, choose a cheap one because he believed in standards. Uh, so hard work does pay, and we can learn from him. Though he didn't believe in shortcuts, and that's what Kahia was. And the opposite of hard work is that he also liked to play very hard, and hence the birth of gringos. Those who know him in the evenings after work, he worked very hard, but he also enjoyed himself equally hard, which is, a good balance. The other point I would also want to emphasize, and I think Father touched on it, is that he believed it is possible to serve God and mankind 
even with, even with what we consider to be literal. So Kahehe was generous in his many ways, and he played his role within his communities. I know I've been involved in very project in, uh, in uh, Xeria, uh, even for churches that he didn't belong to. Uh, he also played a very big role in this church. Every Harambe that we had, he used to participate. And in his earlier days in Kisarian, he used to come to this church, even when we were using those plastic things. Uh, he was very regular here. And Wahoo and Shiro can attest to that. I, I also believe that he touched very many lives uh, through his uh, interaction in a workplace, in training, mentorship, and uh, we've seen this uh, coming back uh, in the sense that the support we have had in the last uh, one week, ten days, has been very, very, you know, uh, we feel very, very honored that people have responded positively uh, on this mission to give him a befitting send-off. If we recognize that uh, all our gifts be their talent, be their resources, if we recognize their gifts from God, then we should focus less on self and focus more on others. And that's what uh, Kahehia believed. He shared the little he had, and I believe he has made a very good attempt to live the greatest of God's commandment of loving yourself as you love your neighbor. Father, I would not want to uh, continue beyond there, but I would like to thank you for accepting my request um, very late on Saturday evening. And uh, I just did one phone call and he said it's done. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you also for the encouraging words. I think we as a family have taken uh, them into our hearts and we remember them as we give him a, a befitting send-off. Thank you, choir, for your beautiful singing. Uh, you are like 50% of the normal choir, but uh, I think you sang very well. Let's give them a clap. <laughs> and with that, I would like to hand over to Father for the final blessing. Thank you. Thank you very much, John. I'm one year in this side of Karen, Langata. I came to this parish October last year, and now I'm one year. I came. People invite, welcomed me very much in the, in the Catholic Church. We have what we call CMA. John was one of them. When I was very new, he encouraged me, don't fear these people. You are the man of the cloth. And when you stand there, you stand on your capacity. And all of us, we are seated. So thank you very much for coming. And thank you, everyone, for supporting the family. Uh, when John called me and told me the story, we met. And he explained to me. And I said, no problem. I will spend my two hours. Now it has gone two hours, 30 minutes. But no problem. We thank God for that. Mine is to wish you all the best on Friday. I wish you all the best. If, but I don't have to promise, if I will have a little bit of time, I may join you. If I don't, remember that I will be with you in spirit and in prayers. As we say, a soldier remains a soldier until that day comes. Thank you very much, brothers, and thanks for honoring one of your own. Continue taking care of the family and the others. Our brothers, who use the other side while we, we are on the ground most of the time. Thanks for coming. <laughs> and the whole stories you have said about Mze, Aliena Maskiyo Afanyanini, I want just to sing aloud Mze Pale, who said, yes, you have talked to you all the positive. Let me talk, tell you now the other part which you don't you know. And I think that is very inspiring sometimes. Uh, we will talk about the positives. 
but sometimes this good also tidak basuh tulis kuarusana kuarusana kidogo sawa sawa and when he said that is that what you use the nuk eh nuku means a monkey or whatever in Swahili and you say the story that one I've registered here I will use it in my preaching somewhere <laughs> yeah putting the hand inside there you have to let it go so that the hand will come out then you move if you don't let it go you'll remain there and the enemies will come and kill you and you go to heaven isn't it so sometimes we need to let things go and then life continue, continues thank you very much brothers and sisters and may god bless you abundantly choir thank you very much mwalimu charles this is our catechist thank you very much and thanks for everybody being patient now i request that you stand up for the final blessings The Lord be with you. And, with your spirit. and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. God. And then the Son.
Safari me, 